be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Jesus Christ, our Lord, at your divine baptism in the Jordan River, you reveal that you are consubstantial with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Enlighten our minds and our hearts on this day of your great epiphany. Make us holy by the indwelling of your Spirit and make us worthy to celebrate this festival of lights, so that we may glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the Church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the one Father whose voice came from heaven testifying to his beloved Son, and to the only begotten Son who is worshipped, whose light radiated upon the river, and who accepted baptism from John his forerunner and to the one Holy Spirit who descended and appeared above the head of the Son. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. The earth rejoices in your epiphany, O Son of God. And the peoples and the nations shall for joy on this day of your baptism. You dawn from the Father and have sanctified baptism for us. O Church of the nations, proclaim the glory of the Son of God, who became man and was baptized for your sake in the Jordan River, and cry out to him. Blessed are you, O Christ, O Word of God. You willingly emptied yourself and took the form of man. You gave us a pledge of life in the waters of baptism, making us holy and heirs of your kingdom. Now, Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to sanctify us through this great epiphany, create a new heart within us, make us newborn children of your Father, and pour out forgiveness upon your flock, that we may worship you, glorify your Father, and give thanks to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. The King's Son.
O Christ, O Word of the Heavenly Father, you became man for our sake, and you were baptized in the Jordan River. You became the way and the door that leads us to the Father. Grant us your grace and your mercy, and accept the fragrance of our incense that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lo mahu yuhuto, mshi ho detamed men yuhanon et raham alai. Kodishat aloho kodishat hayalato no kodishat. Lo maho yohoto, she hold that a med man you hanon, it raha. and nations, waters have been truly blessed. All on earth be attentive, waters have been sanctified. letter of St. Paul to Titus. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and your children forever. For the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately justly and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of the great God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. Say these things, Exhort and correct with all authority. Let no one look down on you. Remind them to be under the control of magistrates and authorities, to be obedient, to be open to every good enterprise. They are to slander no one, to be peaceable, considerate, 
exercising all graciousness toward everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, deluded, slaves to various desires and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful ourselves and hating one another. But when the kindness and generous love of our God, our Savior, appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. Praise be to God always. proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Luke, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Evangelist Luke writes, Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Messiah. And John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, and I am not worthy to loosen the straps of his sandals. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he shall burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many ways, he preached the good tidings to the people. Now Herod, the Tetrarch, who had been censured by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil deeds Herod had committed, added yet another to these by shutting John up in prison. And after all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, heaven opened, And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And the voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. In you I am well pleased. This is the truth. Peace be with you.
and he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we have seen over, well, these years, we brought up the points that the spirituality in the Syriac church actually is around veils and fire. Veils cover, but veils also indicate. It's a bit of a shame in the last 50 years in the church, veils have kind of disappeared, but veils have always been around since the beginning. We veiled our tabernacles, not to hide it, on the contrary. The veil is a paradox because the veil in covering something is actually indicating what is sacred there. When we veil the tabernacles, we veil them not to cover the tabernacle, but to indicate also the place of holiness. In fact, the very word tabernacle means tent. That's why it's covered in cloth. A veil becomes something which both hides and manifests. So that, in fact, the incarnation becomes the great veiling in the history of, of creation. Because God himself appears among us, veiled in human nature, appearing as a man. So the veil aspect is always something that we do to cover what is holy. The altar is covered. The chalices are covered. The saboria are covered. The beauty of women is covered during the time of prophecy and prayer. That is the origin of these traditions from the very beginning because a veil is part of what we do to indicate what is actually unknowable, unseeable, and sacred, transcendent, and simultaneously the veil indicates the presence of that transcendence. That is Christmas. That is the beginning of the 12 days in which we honor the entrance of the great veil in understanding this idea, then the sacraments, the rose, they become the great veiling moments in which God touches creation, in which God, through water and through oil and through bread and through wine, through words, that God's action, his divine actions, touch creation. That's what the sacraments are, the rose. The rose are veils. They are moments indicating to us God's action personally among us and upon us. And so from that point of view, the great sacrament, the great rozo of existence, of creation, is the incarnation, is the birth of Christ. Christ becomes the great sacrament because he is God personally, not just God's action, but God personally among us. And therefore, the 12 days is initiated by Christmas on the 25th of December. And we celebrate during those 12 days, yesterday being the 12th, your Shakespearean play, Twelfth Night. Twelfth Night is the eve of Epiphany. And as we've mentioned before, our proper term for this feast is Denho. Denho is a rising. So it can refer to dawn, a manifestation, an appearance, Denho. But it is also a beautiful connection because rising, dawn, you have the notion of light. And as you've noticed in the Husoyo, it's referred directly to the season now of Epiphany, this feast of Epiphany, as being the festival of light. The other aspect that we have is fire. And you'll notice that fire has two meanings in the gospel today. Our Lord uses it, excuse me, St. John uses it, first of all, talking about the one who is to come after him, that he will baptize you in the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit, and he will baptize you in fire. This is something which is good. But two lines later, he says, and he's come now to winnow the threshing floor. Of course, we're not farmers anymore, so we don't really know what this means. But in the days when you used to harvest, you'd bring all the harvest in and you place all the grain down on your threshing floor. And then you would bring your animals, oxen, horses, whatever, something that you'd just walk them back and they would crush, they were grinding the wheat. And then with forks, you would come into this big pile of all of your grain mess all over the threshing floor and you would throw it in the air so that the wind would blow the chaff the outer hulls and that would throw, would blow it away and the heavier grain would fall back to the threshing floor. So the image is that this is what the Lord God enters into time and history for, is to thresh the floor, 
He's going to bring about this threshing so that the grain can be gathered into the barn, the kingdom, and the chaff, well, the chaff will be blown away and burned. Burning in that instance, the fire, is not something good. But when you bring them together, it's the other aspect of fire in the spiritual life, in the, in the Aramaic tradition, is precisely the aspect that fire is simultaneously purifying, but also destructive. We've talked about this, we mentioned that for the Syriac fathers, like St. Isaac of Nineveh, hell is the love of God. And when you announce it, it sounds very strange. But all it means that is ultimately this love of God, which is manifested continually, day after day, moment after moment, under its veil, is always present. But our Lord has told us that this divine charity will be manifested in its fullness on the last day. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Right? Willy-nilly. Willy-nilly in the back is from the Latin. Vole, nole. Vole is to wish or to desire, to choose. Nole is not to choose. It's the negation of it. That's where our word willy-nilly comes from. It means whether you're ready for it or not, willing or not willing. And so our Lord says that he will come and he will bring this life, whether they want it or not. And that divine love will be manifested throughout our lives and definitively in time at the end of the world that love will be manifested. And at that point, that manifestation of the fire, which is why St. Peter says that creation will be renewed by fire, that manifestation of love on that last day, that fire, everyone's going to receive. Vole, nole, whether you wish it or not. But for someone who has led their lives personally about themselves, their individual, what satisfies me? What do I want? That person is not capable of receiving love on a human level and certainly not on a divine level. And at that point, the manifestation of the divine love from the infinite one becomes scathing. And that becomes the source of what we refer to as being the fires of hell. Fire, of course, is not in the sense of what you have on your Stove. Well, actually, I guess most of us have electric stoves in Maine since we don't have natural gas in all places. But that fire that burns, that destroys, that cooks, that fire, that material fire is not what they talk about with the fires of hell. The fire which is there is purifying and scathing. And so this fire image is also radiating throughout, including on this day of the Festival of Lights. So we have these different images that are here so now we can understand better what baptism is actually about. Baptism is not just simply a ceremony. It is the initiation in the entire form of existence that is transformed by spirit, by the spirit of holiness, and by fire, by divine love. And so it's a very profound and very beautiful aspect of our, for lack of a better term, our spirituality. This is the way we see these things, so that our prayers are transformed precisely by this divine fire and understanding that the uncovering of veil is from moment to moment in our lives, that God is revealing himself to us until hopefully definitive when that last veil that we call death is finally opened. We shall enter into that divine light, into that divine fire. So that veiling is the aspect of what we talk about with death when we talk about the Genese, those who are unseen, they're not gone, they're just simply unseen. They have passed through the veil of death. So the veiling is everywhere, and it is very much of the way we see things. Time is a veil. Where were we at in our conformity to Christ a year ago on this day? And where should we be in our lives? Veiling and fire. Our desire then in our prayers, and we have it actually in our shehimto, in the divine office of the church, in which that love that is manifested, that fire becomes for us an illumination and not one of punishment. It's the same act of God's love that corresponds to what we call beatitude and to those who are stunted in their personal growth and their selfishness of hell. 
And so on the festival of lights, it's a reminder to us that we have to unveil and unload ourselves of our egoism, the veil that closes that weight that's upon our shoulders, which makes me think of Dante's in the divine, in the divine comedy, in the Inferno, the proud, the proud who are forced to carry these huge weights of this leaden copse on top of them, covered in gold, but meaning actually nothing, it's superficial. This huge weight that bears them down, that's our ego, that is our pride. And we live our lives in that shell, and it's a veil in all of the wrong sense that covers us, our egoism and our egocentrism. And so our purpose in our spiritual life is to remove this heavy weight this veil of egoism that we have all inherited by original sin, that the I actually be transformed in the I in the incarnation, and that's what we can bring back to the original sense. That if Christ is the great Roso, the veiled, holy one, born of Mary in, in Bethlehem, he is the great I, I am who am, he is Yahweh, he is the great ego, which is why when we talk about being incorporated into Christ, all members of one body, it becomes, as St. Paul says, the new Adam. And we enter by our baptism, and after we do the blessing of the waters, we will go up one side and down the other side. It is a reminder to us of our baptism. And that baptism which engrafts us into the Christ, so that we in our physical humanity are anointed and baptized and consecrated, but that that transformation of our lives brings our bodies into, and our spirits into the body of Christ, but the person of the body of Christ is the divine word. And that church is also a veil, rather smeared up and, writ and beaten these days, but still the same divine reality upon the earth. The faith of many is shaken at this point in the history of the church, but it is the great veil showing us the divinity of where Christ works upon the earth. But when we enter into that mystery of the church, the person, the ego, the ego of the church is the divine word not mine, not our individual ego. And so that unveiling that we've been talking about is the stripping of my person, my ego, to become more Christ-like in that transformation of the great I am who is the person of the body of Christ, who is the person of the church. So hopefully on this great festival of lights, that's enough mysticism for one dosage. But it is a transformation that we have to go of stripping ourselves in order to find ourselves, to lose ourselves in order to become what we are meant to be. But what we are meant to be is not just by education. What we are meant to be is by grace, transcending, transforming, elevating us higher. It is why when we come to the altar, we enter into that divine mystery and what do we receive in Holy Communion? That very body, soul and divinity of the great sacrament, which is our Lord. So St. John tells us in the gospel today that the one who is coming after me is far beyond me. I'm not even worthy to tie his shoes, nothing. Then he, when he comes, I, I baptized you, I cleanse you in water. It's water, it's just water. But when he comes, he will transform you in the spirit of holiness and cleanse you in fire. May that fire be enkindled in our lives, bring that life, and transform us in the divine love which only God can give. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, 
transfer him for the epiphany in your pews. Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the more blessed mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the chosen one, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of Elisa Evans. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
will continue with the Anapher of St. John Chrysostom on page 876. 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. Peace. O Lord, on high, hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin, and you are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace, accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom, through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you are adorned by all angels, bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you. With purity and holiness, may we offer you an acceptable sacrifice, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our things. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices and with sweet melodies proclaiming. Glory to you, O God, the Heavenly Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your Majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba. 
He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us, for he is your only Son. yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name, by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness, as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us. Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. Amen. 
monio, anin monio, anin monio, nite moro rojo chayu kodisho, unachen alayna al korbono ono. This bread and the body of Christ our God be for us the pledge of the life to come, a body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sins for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, Grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth so that they may spread it faithfully with justice and holiness May they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and the distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, witness the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious Saint Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, and all who pleased you and profess your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints. And in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. And rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will, that in all and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever.
O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory. O Lord, our Lord, you sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity. And he accomplished this plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. Amen. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, Make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo Elokulichun. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty. <laughs> Excuse me. And bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts. And let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord, for He is one in heaven and on earth. To Him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by Your Holy Body and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be with the forgiveness of our sins and for a new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these, your gifts and graces, and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, 
the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. And we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo el Lukulukun. O God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the living cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.